welcome to this week's episode of The Bond Room Unlocked. And today we ask, is On Her Majesty's Secret Service from 1969 the best James Bond film? So, turn the key with me on my 26-year-old Bond collection and with special added Bond content on George Lazenby's one and only stint as James Bond in On Her Majesty's Secret Service. Who is it? Bond. There may be a connection between that man Blofeld and the lawyer with offices in Bern, Switzerland. This is a photostat copy of a letter addressed to our College of Arms in the City of London with the request that they undertake to establish de Blochamp's claim to the title. De Blochamp? French form of Blofeld. Merry Christmas, 007. If my demands are not met, I shall proceed with a systematic extinction of whole species of cereals and livestock all over the world. What she needs is a man to dominate her. Why do you persist in rescuing me, Mr. Bond? It's becoming a habit, isn't it? This department is not concerned with your personal problems. This department owes her a debt. I have the honor to request you will accept my resignation, effective forthwith. Fancy meeting you here, Paul. We must stop it. I love you. Oh, no, 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 Mr. Bond. I'll never find another girl like you. Will you marry me? So back in 1969, George Lazenby steps into his one and only mission as Bond to go undercover and investigate a research facility in the Swiss Alps run by Ernst Stavro Blofeld. Now George is the youngest Bond at 29 years of age and the Bond that had the least acting experience as he was a former model. Yet this film is considered the best. Why? Is it George's portrayal of our super spy that clinches it? He's physical, believable and has a vulnerability, something that we never saw in Connery's Bond. Check out episode 17 where I delve deeper into George Lazenby's Bond and analyse his performance. Can anyone hear a car? Hi there, Agent Latchford here. And I'm here to talk about On Her Majesty's Secret Service. And I thought this would be quite an appropriate place to talk about On Her Majesty's Secret Service because not only does the film start in a car, but it ends in a car as well. So I just thought I'd have a little drive in my uh, uh, Aston Martin DBS and tell you a few of my thoughts about the film. Um, about why I think it's the best Bond film. Oh, hang on a minute. Anyway, first of all, the thing I absolutely love about the film is the soundtrack. It is absolutely fantastic. It's one of, if not the best score by John Barry. In fact, I've got it playing in the background. The score is just fantastic from start to finish. Also, you've got a fantastic song all the time in the world which is absolutely beautiful and this never happened to the other fella yes the soundtrack is possibly the best composed arranged and conducted by john barry his fifth bond soundtrack and it provides the piece of memorabilia that i want to share with you today this is the original motion vinyl soundtrack to the film and what i love about these vinyl records is you get so much more for your money great eye catching outer sleeve on a majesty's secret service with george's bond surrounded by beautiful women maybe the angels of death and then on the reverse of the sleeve fantastic artwork depicting the assault on Piz Gloria and of course we have stills from the film across the bottom and a little bit about John Barry himself absolutely brilliant now when John Barry was given the task to compose a theme for the film 
he felt it was too difficult to devise a theme song around the title of Honor Majesty's Secret Service. So Peter Hunt allowed him to create an opening instrumental, which of course follows in the footsteps of earlier films. Now, the overall score to this film is far more synthetic, as in the use of synth keyboards. And it's a fantastic piece that is used as a great action theme. And of course, Philip has mentioned the love song we have all the time in the world, which can be mistaken for the theme song. Such a beautiful piece that reflects Bond and Tracy's courtship. See, that's something else that was different. Bond courting the woman. That's not been seen before. So, is Honor Majesty's Secret Service considered the best because of the formidable cast that surrounds George? Diana Rigg as Tracy, Telly Savalis as Blofeld, Gabrielle Fazzetti as Draco. Do these characters help George along within the narrative? I think so, but at times George really holds his own, especially in the fight scenes. Secondly, I, I love George. He's absolutely fantastic in it. He's a very raw Bond. He is the, he is the blunt instrument that they keep going about Daniel Craig. And he's got a vulnerability about him, which none of the other Bonds seem to have. He's also hard. He's a very hard man. And I think that's not just in, in the film, I, I think that's in real life. The Honor Majesty's Secret Service novel was Fleming's 10th novel. And he brought new aspects to the story by showing Bond's emotional side, something that is heavily present in the film adaptation. Now in the book, very little is given away about Tracy's character, but she's brought to the screen by the late great Dame Diana Rigg. And Bond refers to her her price is far above rubies, or even your million pounds. Now part of this speech is taken from Proverbs 31.10. This is Bond's regard for Tracy and her high moral standards, and how she just has to have what she wants. And in this case, Bond himself. No sign of him yet. Or of someone saying thank you. Thank you, Tracy. You've got sharp eyes and beautiful earlobes. What were you doing so near Piz Gloria? Now I have a new interest in life. Winter sports, eh? Very wholesome. Just one winter sportsman. And Pa told me where to find him. Um, thirdly, the story. It's it's Fleming, isn't it? From start to finish, it is a very good adaptation of what is one of one of uh, Ian Fleming's greatest books. Not only that, fourthly, you've got the locations, the absolutely amazing locations. From the start when you're in Estoril in Portugal to the end, again in, in Portugal, but in between you've got the, the majesticness of Peace Gloria and that wonderful alpine scenery. It really is fantastic from the moment, moment you first see it. And that's one of my, my favorite scenes in the film is the, uh, the moment where the helicopter uh, takes off with Bond and uh, Irma Bunt, where they go um, up into the Swiss, the Swiss mountains all the way up to Peace Gloria. Um, the cinematography of that particular scene is absolutely sensational. Um, you really feel like our Bonds just moved to, to another level. None of the other Bonds are, are as fantastic as that. What else have we got that's brilliant about it? Blofeld. I love the way that Blofeld toys, plays with Bond, plays with his mind. He knows who he is. He knows who he is from the minute they met. And he's playing a game. He wants to find out. What is he really up to? And when you get the reveal, he refers to him as, as 007. Merry Christmas 007. It's absolutely a fantastic scene. Um, why else do I like Majesty's Secret Service? 
Well, I feel a real attachment to the film, um, particularly as I was one of those people who was fortunate enough to have gone on the Majesty's Secret Service, uh, the 50th anniversary o -O -M -O -H -M -S 50, um, which now took place um, uh, two years ago. Uh, Martin Mulder's fantastic weekend. We had everything. We had helicopter rides. We sat in Bond cars. We, uh, what else did we do? Oh, cue the music concert. One of their greatest concerts. That's on. Uh, that's on YouTube. Watch it if you get a chance. Also got a chance to meet George. Interesting character. But um, as a Bond fan, it was it was the ultimate. I got to meet so many other, I mean, so many other people. It was absolutely wonderful. And so um, it's sort of, you know, my love of the film is crossed over with the love of the fan events and the love of the locations. Now I know many fans in the Bond community have been lucky enough to visit Piers Gloria and I must admit it's on my lifetime bucket list. It's a location like no other and I know Philip will touch on this shortly. It's totally breathtaking the way it sits on top of the mountain like a cherry on a cake. Now the production team found this amazing partly constructed restaurant uh, way up in the Swiss Alps in Schiltthorn beneath Oberland and, and asked if they could contribute to its completion. Could it be used in the film? And the rest is history. When you put all these pieces together, George, the cast, the score, the writing and the incredible locations, you're looking at a pretty special film and it rates in my top five easily. Yet on release it was sadly underappreciated but over the years Bond fans have come to love this film for the thrilling adventure that it is, a timeless classic impressive set pieces and cast, beautifully shot. So the purpose of this channel is to take the items in this Bond room and relate them to the films that we know and love like we have done so today. If you have enjoyed this brief look at Honor Majesty's Secret Service then give it an MI6 stamp of approval and click on the notifications below. And why not subscribe so you don't miss any further missions. Now you can find me, The Bond Room Unlocked, on Facebook and on Instagram for far more Bond content. So come and get involved and you never know, you may be part of the videos in the future like Agent Latchford has. Talking of Agent Latchford, I'd like to thank him for his amazing input into today's video. It has been great. And I'd like to thank you for joining me at The Bond Room Unlocked. See you next week. But I re you know, I really do think at the time it was it was so underrated. Yet now it is seen it's seen as the classic, and it is the it is often number one on Bond fans' lists. It really is a sensational film. I think it's the best one. Is it my favourite? Well, we all know what my favourite is, but it's certainly the best one. Hang on a minute, I think I just need to pull in somewhere. God, this is a quiet spot. Wouldn't get any other cars along here. Oh, hang on a minute.